Welcome back, this is Carrie with The Gilded Bubble, and today I am making one of my signature cat soaps, which uses a scraper tool to get the final effect. And um, I actually am sold out of this one, but uh, I have other ones that are available in the shop, but these are also available locally at um, a cat cafe here, and I'll include a link to that in the comments, or in the, I'll, I'll include a link to that in the description. But I'm using Wicked by Mad Micahs, and ballet slippers from Mad Micahs, and there's a little bit of titanium dioxide in there. It's also scented with grapefruit, um, ruby red grapefruit from Nature's Garden, which is one of my faves. Sensing a pattern here. I like to make soaps with scents I like. I've got to get out of that habit. Sorry, I love watching soap swirl and I'm getting fascinated by this on my screen. But, um, I'm basically going to mix this to emulsion, maybe even a little bit of a light trace, and get it done so that I can, I actually want my wicked and my titanium dioxide to be a little thick so that when I kind of plop it in the mold that I can scrape it right away. That way I've got enough time to work with the pink that's going to be the background color. So I've got it here just a little bit past emulsion. You can see there's not any trace on top of that soap. So it's, it's incorporated. I don't have to worry about it separating on me. Um, and uh, I can then kind of go ahead and, and separate this out. So kind of the way that I do this is the cat itself is about two thirds of my batch. And then the background color is another third. So I'm really careful about measuring this out because if I go much less than that two thirds, I don't have enough to scrape, even though you end up with a little bit of excess. So you'll see that little blue mold there to the side where I scoop out my extra batter so that I don't really waste anything. And then those get um, given away when people place uh, larger orders of, you know, three or more bars. Usually I'll throw those little, they're little, they're basically the size of hand or guest soaps. Um, and I'll throw those in an order. So that one I'm going to leave alone because that I need to stay fluid. And I'm going to focus on um, the gray, which is wicked. And then the titanium dioxide, which... The titanium dioxide is going to set up quickly enough on its own. Um, this one will, will take a little bit more stirring. Um, so bad at getting stuff in the frame. <laughs> and then this was a setup I did in my kitchen. So I think the next video for me you'll see, or at least the one I just filmed, uh, is actually in my new soap studio. And I have a nice um, stainless steel table. However, I still am trying to figure out the setup for filming. So who knows what that's going to look like. but it's total, you can't even see what I'm doing. Way to go. All I'm doing is mixing the color in. And I'm just adding the titanium dioxide to what I have left here. I learned a little bit the hard way. It's kind of hard to mix that little bit of batter in this big pitcher. Probably should have gone ahead and put it in the smaller one, but hey, you know, you just learn things when you're, uh, you screw stuff up and you learn stuff from it. You actually learn better when you make mistakes than you do when you get things right the first time. Um, so, you know, hey, learning. And yet I've still d tried to do this several times <laughs> since I did this exact soap. I've tried mixing two small amounts in pitchers and it's a pain in the butt. I think I should probably get one of those little mini mixers for when I do very small amounts, but this I'm really trying to get it to set up. I really want a medium to thick trace and you can see that that soap is starting to look like vanilla pudding, which is what you want if you're going to be scraping something because I want I want to be able to keep my other batter fluid enough. Now I tried once splitting my bat my batch and I just didn't do the math right. Math is not my friend. And um, when I did that, the top, the background part of my soap never set properly. It was too, it didn't have enough lye in it. So um, it ended up, I ended up kind of scraping it apart and kind of um, making a kind of a, I don't know, I took it and, and created this Frankenstein of a soap out of melt and pour and then my cold process. So I don't want to have to do that again. So what I'm really trying to focus on is mixing um, my bottom layer really well to um, almost a thick trace and then leaving my other one without fragrance in it and without um, stirring it until I absolutely need it but I still sometimes screw that up. I made one recently that I really just, <laughs> y'all, I just, I get where I'm, my brain just goes, nope, we're not going to think today. We're not going to function. And then the soap gets messed up. So I've had way too many, um, oops, batches lately, and I'm getting real sick of that. 
And again, I'm not in frame. Look at that. I'm putting my fragrance in that white amount. Look at how much you can see. You can see the bottom of my bowl. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> there, look at that. I remembered I was filming. That's actually getting pretty good, but me, I'm sort of mixing it by hand to try to really make sure that I've got everything incorporated and that I'm not going too fast. I don't want it to seize on me and then you can't do anything with it. But you can see, by the way, that's hanging on the side of the bowl there. That's pretty good thick trays. And it'll continue to set, so I don't know why I keep messing with it. It's going to set up, Carrie. Hello. <laughs> oh, This is why this soap had some weird pointy things going on, because I overmixed it a little bit. That's fine. Just dump it in the damn mold. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me stir this, or maybe I'll even cut it out. You don't want this. Okay. I hope you're enjoying the top of my fragrance bottle in an empty mold. I mean, that that's thrilling, thrilling cinema for you. Oh, look, there, I poured it in the mold. <laughs> what the hell? Who taught me how to YouTube? It certainly wasn't anybody who knew what the hell they're doing. So there's my, uh, my white... <laughs> Uh, and I should have probably sculpted this a little bit. I don't have a scraper that'll allow me to do kind of like a rounded or something. I could have just done it with my spatula. But I think the next time I do it, I'm actually going to use um, a column mold to kind of get this shape that I want. So look for that coming soon. I might redo this one and get it a little bit better. I just put the fragrance in the uh, dark color. And I've got to stir. I've got, you've got to thicken that up, girl. All you're doing. Oh, Jesus. Who was this person and why did she take on my life and pretend to be me? She's just a hot mess here. Girl, you're not doing anything. What the hell? This makes me want to redo this soap like right now. Just so I don't have to watch myself fumble through it. Right? <laughs> While I'm recording. The I don't know. I'm doing voiceover here after the fact. So I'm kind of just watching. I haven't seen this video in what, like a month or two like like I said I've already sold out of these in my online shop and there's a there, I think that they might have even sold out in the cat cafe like it's been long enough that these have sold out so I don't even remember making it at this point but I really like the color combination I thought the pink went really well with the dark steely gray and that white um but uh and then I make a boneheaded mistake here of sticking my uh, stick blender into that gray without wiping the white off and there ended up being a few chunks of white in uh in my dark see look look at that what the hell was she thinking god i just what am i doing i'm just oh i'm good i'm gonna add some more that makes sense <laughs> I'm glad this one is sold out. I cannot imagine showing you this video and then be like, buy these soaps that I laughed at. They really turn out fine, but the process here is just unbelievably dumb. And then you can see my mold there is bowing. I That mold is giving me fits. I've figured out, I think, why it does that. Um, I do wash them by hand, so I'm not getting them warped like in a dishwasher or anything. But I think I need to let them dry outside of the mold, outside of the frame, so that they don't bow in like that. But... It's been a nightmare for me making these soaps because I like this size. They, they come out pretty much square. And I like the way they look, so I don't want to go to a different size because I could order a custom width scraper and use any mold I want. Um, but I like the way these look, so I've been toying with it. I bought a third mold, and I'm just going to keep playing with it until I get it. I've tried lining them with um, freezer paper, which does work, but they end up too big. And then the cat scraper doesn't... Uh, look quite right when I do that. So here I am trying to shape this white portion of the tuxedo cat. And really all I end up doing is making it pointy. And it looks, it, it just, I, it could have been better. It doesn't look bad, but it could have been better. Yeah, that's going to help it. You just scrape that off there. I've got to get better at being less messy with these, but they, you know, again, they turn out fine. They're adorable. I absolutely love making these cat soaps. And I have a partnership with um, the local cat cafe but essentially we split the proceeds of it so that, you know, half the cost that you pay is going right back into the cafe and thus helping the rescue that they work with. So which um, the cat cafe is Witty Whisker and the rescue is Murphy's Kittens. Uh, and I'll include links to those in the description if you're interested. But um, really, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for, and I foster kittens myself, but I'm a huge advocate for trap, neuter, return, which Murphy's Kittens does a lot of in our community. And that's essentially where the cats um, 
you know, if you see stray or community cats, getting them spayed or neutered, getting their shots, and then re-releasing them into their colony, they get an ear tip so that if you ever see a cat with an ear tip, that means that they have been neutered or spayed and then returned to their community, which helps a lot. <laughs> there you can see the white that I got in the dark gray. Jeez. Um, it's a wonder this turned out looking good at all, but it did. Um, but what helps with when you... Um, get a cat fixed and then return it to their community is they tend to be less aggressive, they don't spread as much disease, and then most importantly, they don't keep procreating. Um, a, fem a female cat can produce hundreds of kittens in her lifetime, and um, so it's really crucial. And then male cats, when they're not neutered, tend to be more aggressive. Um, they tend to uh, get in more fights and, and have more issues because of the wounds that they receive. Um, cat bites are some of the most toxic wounds you can have. On an animal or a person and you notice look at those blobs of white in there it really did turn out cute it just made the cat look like it had little white spots on it but here i am pouring this when it's incredibly fluid i don't know why i didn't thicken that up a little bit before i did this but you know hey i ended up having to let it sit for a while and uh and so it but my pink stayed pretty fluid part of that's the fragrance citrus fragrances often um decelerate your batter a little bit so that's part of the reason the other part is just that I didn't stick blend it any more beyond emulsion. But yeah, if you're if you're a cat lover like I am, you know, I highly recommend supporting TNR efforts in your area. There's an organization called Alley Cat Allies, and I'll throw that link in the description. Um, but they will they can connect you with um, or if there isn't one in your community, you can start one. It's really easy. Buy a trap, find a place that does low cost spay or neuter uh, and uh, and just start taking care of it. You know, if you're feeding stray cats in your neighborhood and they're friendly and, you know, or even if they're not friendly, you can still trap them and, and get them into, uh, to be spayed or neutered. And then you're helping to slow down and maybe even stop the spread of unwanted cats and kittens. Um, I, I know locally our, our shelter, um, euthanizes a lot of kittens, especially if they get neonatal kittens, which are the ones that still need to be with mom. Uh, because they have no means to care for them. It's not because they hate animals or they want to, they want to murder tiny baby kittens, um, but it's a matter of resources. And so if we can support them and, and do that and, and help care for the cats and make sure that there aren't kittens born and separated and, and having to be euthanized. So that's, I, I, I believe strongly and I foster neonatal kittens. I fostered a pregnant mother before. Um, you know, I just, I don't see any reason why with all the technology we have and all the resources we have in this country, we should be caring for animals and children, you know, <laughs> they can't help themselves. So it's our responsibility. Now I'm scraping out the last bit of my white here to put it in the uh, little mold. And uh, it's so set up that it's like, it won't even fill the whole thing. It's really thrilling though, isn't it? That's why I was talking about, about kittens, because that's more exciting. I'll uh, stick a few photos in here of some of the cats that I've rescued over the years, because kitten pictures are always adorable. Um, and uh, you'll get to see kind of, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, I don't, um, we have way too many neonatal kittens that need help. And so, you know, I'd rather I didn't have to do that, because that means that our po cat population is under control, and they're getting adopted, and we're not seeing a large influx of more kittens. But also you know, kittens are cute and they're fun to cuddle and it keeps me from getting more cats mostly. I do have three foster fails. So here I'm testing to see if it's set up enough to scrape. And uh, it is, you can see I'm getting a really nice clean, well, mostly clean line there. You can see that white that got into it. Um, and again, what I'm doing here is off screen, but I'm just sc scraping out the excess as I'm going and I'll run that scraper through there a few times. Um, but the more you let it set up, the more your shape is going to hold when you put um, more soap on top of it. And that little bit I put in there is because I noticed a hole in it. So I have to go back and keep that air pocket from showing. And so I'll go all the way to the end, scoop out my excess, and then go back and do another pass with it. I'm not the greatest at using um, the scraper yet. I'm real sloppy with it. I see soapers do this, and they're just so neat with it. And I'm over here like... How the heck do you not get this everywhere? But I think part of it is because the pointy ear shape of this. I mean, certain scrapers, like a mountain, it's a little more flat. So what you get on the scraper like this is a little easier to handle. Um, but you can see I'm just flinging soap everywhere. This is why we wear gloves, kids. That that soap right now is is very is you know not saponified, so that lye in there is going to burn you. You have to be real careful not to get it on your skin or in your eyes or on your cats. 
I have one cat that she's just really nosy and trying to, especially when I was in my kitchen like this, uh, it was really hard to keep her out of it. And you've seen, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen her pop her head in and you have to like really quickly move to get her out of the way because she'll just, and also I don't want cat hair in this stuff. So, you know, I have to uh, really get, be careful and watch them. And so that's usually why my mom's here. She helps keep the, the kitten at bay while I'm trying to create soap. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of the neater ones that I've made, if you can believe that. Uh, this is one that came out pretty well in the end product, but you see how messy this is. It's just the soap gets everywhere, and I'm trying to, I'm doing my best. What I need to be doing is wiping off that spatula. Somebody, somebody go back in time and tell this girl, wipe your spatula off. Don't just keep sticking it back in the soap with, see, and here I'm going to pour with all that soap on the side of the mold. What the hell are you doing? But see how nice and fluid my pink still is because I waited and that didn't get stirred and it's it's a little thicker than ideal but it's still pretty fluid I mean that's gonna be a nice sharp line between those black cat ears and this pink background look at that mess in that other mold though geez <laughs> oh I, I'm surprised it's not everywhere right now like all over that tablecloth it is all over the mold though wow Oh, now I wipe the spatula off, smart ass. Jesus, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, sure, scrape the sides now when you've already poured the other stuff right on top of it. I guess it's easier when you're watching it, not doing it. In the moment, sometimes I'm just like, okay, what do I need to do next? What do I need to, how quickly do I need to move? And uh, I forget to be neat and precise. I'll throw in a link too of, um, I really like watching, there's several um, soapers based in uh, Korea that I love watching because, um, and even just seeing their end product because they're so precise and so neat. And that's kind of where I want to get with it. But the problem is if you're trying to create soap to be sold um, and you're not doing it less as art and more as, you know, or, and more as, you know, a commercial product, it takes so much time. So it's like, I'm trying to find the balance between being a neat, precise soaper and being an efficient soaper. And right now I'm probably not either. <laughs> hey, look at that though. I'm getting the tops of those pretty smooth. What I failed to remember is that because it's kind of gloopy, it's not going to fill the bottom. So I have to kind of shove it in there. And so these soaps didn't come out exactly smooth on the bottom, but hey, they're free samples. I mean, I don't ever heard anyone complain that the free sample of something they got was a little wonky looking. And if they do, screw them. Those are selfish people. Like, it's free. What do you want from me? <laughs> no, but still, I try to make them look good. I don't want to give you guys ugly stuff, but it's just the idea that you can sample maybe a scent that you didn't order. I try to make sure that when I do put samples in my orders that there's something you didn't already get. That way you're getting another scent. So unfortunately, I did not film the cutting of this one, but this is the finished product. Like I said, I'll be redoing this one again. Um, but actually, I'm going to throw in here a cutting of a, another cat soap that I did. This is the one I was telling you about that didn't turn out. And um, I think, though, the cutting, you'll see kind of how they come out. So this is the cut of Ginger Kitty, which is also sold out. Um, but I do have Rescue Kitty in the store, which is uh, a TNR-inspired um, design. But you can see, if you look at the top of this one here, see how soft and, and crumbly that is? That's because I didn't have enough lye in that top layer. So it didn't actually create, it did create soap, but it was still very soft. It was never going to set up. So what I did was I ended up scraping it off and... Um, and changing it out for some melt and pour and I, I did that I'll show you how I did that also I got or how how it turned out um, but this is this is just fun to see kind of how these these kitty soaps turn out when I cut them they're so cute and it's so fun to see how that um, design turns out in the middle and I loved this one because I did a swirl um, I did it in the pot I think for this one and it gave me what looked like orange ginger kitty stripes he's really cute I was wearing gloves to try to avoid putting fingerprints in that soft spot, not realizing it was never going to set up. I still have one that I saved, and it is not set up at all. And this has been, gosh, I, I made this soap back in November. So it's never going to set. So those are super cute. I'm going to throw the picture in here now of 
um, what it ended up looking like after I fixed it. So I took a, um, a mold that wasn't a bar, it wasn't a loaf mold, it was a single bar mold, and I cut out around the orange part of this cat and um, just basically poured the green around it. And um, actually they sold really well. I'm sold out of those, so I can't, I can't complain, but I hated having to do melt and pour, not because there's anything wrong with doing melt and pour, but because, you know, I wanted it to be a cold process soap. And there it is. So you can see, you can kind of, I think you can tell that's melt and pour. And you can also see just a little bit of the green. I didn't get away out of there, but they came out really cute. I'm not mad about these and, and the people that bought them absolutely loved them. So um, you never know how something's going to turn out. But I, but the way that the tuxedo one turned out is my standard style. And I've got a really cute um, white and yellow coming up that um I, I'm super excited about. So it ought to be ready in the next couple weeks. I started, actually, you can see here, using this cat face stamp, which I think just adds a nice little touch to them. As always, if you liked this video, please be sure to like, comment, or subscribe. And I will see you next Saturday with another new soap making video.